हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू बीटेक फर्स्ट ईयर फिजिक्स कोर्स नाउ टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस स्टोक्स थ्योरम एंड कांसेप्ट ऑफ कर्ल ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द थ्योरम इज नेम्ड आफ्टर आइरिश मैथमेटिशियन एंड फिजिसिस्ट सर जॉर्ज स्टोक्स एंड व्हाट वी कॉल स्टोक्स थ्योरम वाज एक्चुअली डिस्कवर्ड बाय स्कॉटिश फिजिसिस्ट सर विलियम थॉमसन Stokes learned of it in a letter from Thomson in 1850. Okay, so this was the history of Stokes theorem. Now, if we talk about its application, then we must say Stokes theorem plays important role in fluid mechanics, electrostatics, magnetostatics, especially in Ampere's law. Then electromagnetic induction. Okay. so let's understand the theorem it tells that the line integral of the tangential component of continuous vector field a taken over a simple closed curve c is equal to the surface integral of the normal component of the curl of the vector field taken over any surface having c as its boundary okay and in mathematical form we can write like this now here the direction of the line integral along the curve is considered as positive direction so what it means it means if an observer walks on the boundary of the surface in such a way that the surface on his left side and his head pointing in the direction of positive normal to the surface okay next we have to understand what is curl of a vector field and how we can express it in mathematical form then we will prove stokes theorem okay so let's proceed so first consider an infinite simple rectangle of sides del y and del z in yz plane and p is the middle point of this rectangle and its position is x y z now suppose a vector field a is passing through this rectangle and the form at p is like this then the line integral of the vector field along the path a b c d a is given by like this as the starting point and end point are same this is also called closed line integral of the vector field right here dl vector is j dy plus k dz as the rectangle is in yz plane now we can decompose the closed line integral into this four line integrals along different paths now you see along ab dl vector is j dy along positive y axis along bc k dz along positive z axis along cd minus j dy opposite to positive y axis and along da minus k dz along negative z axis right now we have to solve these integrals so let's solve the first integral here a2 function of x y z minus del z by 2 denotes the component of a vector at the midpoint of ab path in the direction of positive y axis because just below p point here the coordinate is x y z minus del z by 2 and the length of ab varies from minus del y by 2 to plus del y by 2 now this a2 function of x y and z minus del z by 2 can be written like this a2 minus del a2 by del z then multiplied by del z by 2 which is the length from p to the middle of ab right and why is this minus sign coming 
because the midpoint of AB is del Z by 2 distance below of P point. And after integration, we get this. Okay. Similarly, along CD, BC and DA, the value of integrations are like this. So, total closed line integration along A, B, C, D, A path will be addition of all the four terms and we get this. Del A3 del Y minus del A2 del Z multiplied by del Y del Z. And this term is actually the X component of curl of A. Then this X component of curl of A can be written like this. And condition is the limit S tends to 0. It means this expression is valid only in the limit as the rectangle swings to P point. Right. Then similarly, Y component of curl A will be del A1 del Z minus del A3 del X and Z component of curl A will be del A2 del X minus del A1 del Y. Now, if we add these terms in component wise, we get this form of curl of A. And this can be written like this form also. Okay. So, this is similar to A cross B, cross products of two arbitrary vectors. Only difference is instead of the first vector, we have del operator. And you know del operator is i del del x plus j del del y plus k del del z. Then we get del cross a. Now let's understand the physical interpretation of curl of a vector field. In vector calculus, the curl is a vector operator that describes the infinite simul rotation of a vector field in three dimensional space. Now at every point in this field, the curl of that vector field is represented by another vector and that is perpendicular to the plane of rotation of the vector field. Okay. So the direction of the curl is actually the axis of rotation of the vector field and this can be determined by right hand rule. Now here the direction of the thumb is indicating the direction of the curl and direction of tip of other fingers is showing the direction of rotation. Now the magnitude of the curl is the magnitude of rotation of the vector field and that is measured by the length of the new vector along the axis of the rotation which is the thumb direction. Okay. Now, if a vector field represents the flow velocity of a moving fluid, then curl is the circulation density of the fluid. And we can quantify the curl of a vector field by this equation for this small loop. Next, we have to prove the Stokes theorem. So, to do that, let us consider a surface S like this and it is bounded by the curve C. Then let us divide the surface S into n numbers of elementary rectangle or square. And let us say area of such an element is del SI. Here I represents the ith element. Okay. And the boundary curve is CI. Then the line integral of the vector A around each of the paths in anticlockwise direction can be written as closed line integral A around CI curve is equal to curl of A dot NI del SI. Here NI is the unit normal on del SI surface. Okay and i varies from 1 to n. Then if del si becomes infinitely small and n becomes infinitely large in number, then 
summing over all such possible line integrals on the surface S in the same direction, same anticlockwise or positive direction, we get the line integral around perimeter C, which encloses the total surface S. Because all parts of line integral around the surface elements cancel out, except the parts which are along the perimeter C, that does not cancel out. Okay? And we get this complete form of Stokes theorem. Okay. Now, let us discuss one problem which involves the concept of gradient and from there we have to evaluate work done by this vector field or force field which is of this form y square cos x plus z cube i cap plus 2y sin x minus 4 j cap plus 3x z square plus 2 k cap. Now, first we have to prove that this vector field is conservative field. So, for that the necessary and sufficient condition is curl of that force field will be 0. So, let us verify that whether the force field is conservative or not. For that first we have to write the form of curl X and that is like this. So, it is similar to vector A cross B. And instead of a vector here, we have del operator, right? And these are different components of a vector. Now, if we do the operation of partial derivatives, then we get this form. And we get the value of curl f is 0, okay? Thus, we can tell the given force field is conservative in nature. And for that, it can be written as f equals to del phi or gradient of phi, where phi is a scalar potential or scalar field. Right? Now, we have to find out that scalar potential associated with the given conservative field. Okay? So, as f equals to gradient of phi and the form of del operator is like this i cap del del x plus j cap del del y plus k cap del del j we can write this equation right now let us compare each component of the force field and we get these equations right now to find out the phi we have to integrate these equations and after integrating these equations, we get this form of phi. Now, as the equation 1 is derivative of phi with respect to x, keeping y and z fixed, then integrating this, we get y square sin x plus x z cube plus f y j. Now, what is this f y z? So, this is the function of y z. So, as the integration with respect to x and y and z are fixed, then we will get an integration constant which will be function of y and z. Now, similar for others. Okay. Now, here we can see that the forms of the scalar potential are different. Right? But the scalar potential is single value. So, those different form of phi agrees if we choose f y z equal to minus 4 y plus 2 z, g x z, x z cube plus 2 z and h x y, y square sin x minus 4. Okay. So, final form of phi will be y square sin x plus x z cube minus 4y plus 2z and one integration constant that is arbitrary, right? To find out the work done in moving an object in the field F from a point P1 to P2, we have to perform this integration. Now, as the force field is conservative in nature, we can put gradient of phi 
in place of the force field F. Right? And we get integration P1 to P2 del phi del x dx plus del phi del y dy plus del phi del z dz. And this term is actually d phi, which is called differential of phi. And the expression of phi we have already obtained. That is y square sin x plus xz cube minus 4y plus 2z and arbitrary constant. Right? Now after integration we get this. So this is similar to integration of dx. Right? If you do the integration of dx, what you will get? You will get x. So similarly here, integration of d phi, you are getting phi. And the expression of phi is like this. And here the points P1 is 0, 1, minus 1. And P2 is pi by 2, minus 1, 2. Now putting these values, we get this value of work done. Okay. So here, one important point you should remember that as the force field is conservative in nature, work done is path independent. And the value is potential difference between the final and initial points. Right? Today I stop here. Okay. So thank you for attending today's lecture. See you in the next class.